The nice thing I like about this kind of design is with the twin helms, you have a lot more room in the center of the cockpit to come and go. So you want to make sure that you've got really robust stanchions, that you've got a good amount of height on the Lifeline wire itself. Hi, this is Tom from Life 4.0. If you are here, you undoubtedly like boating and being on the water. So do Karen and I. It's been a lifelong passion. But in order to make the passion last a lifetime, we take personal safety very seriously on board our boat, Sea Rose. Suffering from an avoidable injury, or worse, hoping for rescue in a storm-tossed life raft, is a quick way to lose that passion. In this first installment in our series on safety, we talk about boat design and configuration what you should look for during the purchase of a boat, and what you should upgrade after the sale to improve your safety. So, let's go on board Sea Rose. One of the most important things about safety on board a boat is doing everything you can uh, to not to fall overboard. It sounds kind of elementary, uh, but there's a lot of products out there that help to rescue people once they're in the water. I don't think there's enough focus on trying to make sure you stay on board the boat. Uh, if you read things about safety on board boats and about accidents that happen, um, it's very difficult to recover somebody once they fall in the water. So um, everything you can do to make sure you stay on board and the rest of your crew stay on board is of paramount importance. Um, so I'm going to focus on that initially and I think there's some important design things related to making sure people stay on board. You can think of it as almost like a falling off a cliff. If you fall overboard, um, you know, the chances of your rescue are limited. Uh, typically people don't fall overboard in calm conditions on beautiful sunny days with no wind. It's usually at nighttime, it's usually under high winds and seas. Uh, stormy conditions, all of these things make it very, very difficult to find somebody and also to recover them uh, before they um, are lost or uh, before they perish due to the, uh, the extreme elements. So if you think about it, when you fall overboard, it's almost like falling over a cliff. So if you have that frame of mind in your head, uh, that's a good way to, to be and to think about what do I need to do to keep myself on board. One thing I wanted to cover right off the bat is bringing all of your control lines aft into the cockpit. A lot of modern boats have this, but still there are many boats out there, particularly older boats, that do not have this implemented, and a lot of race boats that have a lot of the controls all the way up on the mast. And this is super important in my mind for when you're uh, needing to reduce sail, to furl sails, and to basically control the sails during a storm. So being able to have all of your control lines here back in the cockpit, it's one less time you have to walk up on deck and take yourself out of the comfort of the cockpit. So that's one important design consideration I believe that you should look for and try to implement on your boat if it's not already there. Now some people may say, well, it, it brings a lot of lines back in the cockpit and makes the cockpit really crowded. Um, I don't think that's a big concern in my mind. Uh, it just reduces the opportunity for you to fall overboard if you have to go up on deck. Uh, the next design consideration to me is uh, roller furrowing sails. Now, a lot of cruising boats, I'd say pretty much every cruising boat out there nowadays, has a roller furrowing jib, which is great. Uh, reduces the, the need for you to go up on deck to furrow and unfurl your jib. Now, some boats have uh, a mainsail that rolls in, in the mast or in the boom. We have on board Sea Rose an in-mast furling mainsail. And that's another important design situation where you don't have to go up on deck to raise your mainsail and also to furl that mainsail. So that's one less time to take a risk of falling overboard on deck. Now you do take some impact to performance of the boat because of roller furling mainsails and to some extent roller furling uh, jibs. But again, I think it's a good compromise to allow you to be more safe on board. One thing I find when people don't have a roller furling mainsail is that they raise the main uh, right away when they leave and they often either keep the mainsail up longer than it needs to because it's difficult to lower or they don't take the chance to raise the main when there is a moment of wind uh, because of the pain that it takes to raise it. So I think it does give you a chance to use your mainsail more often. It also uh, provides you pretty much an unlimited variation in the amount of sail air you have out. So as the wind gets stronger, you can just roll that mainsail a little bit more in, a little bit more in, and then roll it all the way in if you need to. All without leaving the cockpit, again, if you're 
control lines are led back into the cockpit. And another topic related to the mainsails, which is an important safety consideration, is make sure you have a preventer rigged up if you're going downwind. An accidental jibes and the boom swinging across the deck is one source of injury to people and knocking people overboard in the water. So having a good preventer set up on both sides so you can jibe your boat downwind without having a risk of having an accidental jibe is uh, another important design consideration. Doesn't take a lot to install one, not a lot of technical gear, and it does increase uh, the safety of the boat and also wear and tear on all your rigging uh, for those accidental jibes. Uh, next up in design is uh, the lifelines and the stanchions that hold the lifelines. So you want to make sure that you've got uh, really robust stanchions, that you've got uh, a, a good amount of height on the lifeline wire itself, and um, that it's going to be robust enough and strong enough to hold you on board as much as possible if you were to fall onto the lifeline wire. Um, so you want to check those all out and make sure that all of your lifelines are in good condition and to replace them as they age. Some people, particularly with kids on board, will put netting on the lifeline, especially forward of the mast. I think that's a great idea. Actually, we've had it on a previous boat for controlling sails going overboard, but it does give one more opportunity to prevent things and people falling overboard if you have netting on your lifeline. Next, I want to talk a little more about ergonomics related to movement around the cockpit for safety. Now, our boat um, is a, a new Genoa Sun Odyssey 440, and they spent a, quite a bit of time, I feel like, designing it well for movement in the boat. Sure, some of it is just for general comfort, but you could say that comfort also uh, brings safety with it as well. Now, one of the nice things about the cockpit is I'm, a, I'm able to flow right over here and walk up and up to the deck area. Um, I don't have to climb over the cockpit combing um, and risk any injury or falling overboard there. Um, I can walk right back into the center of the cockpit area and walk right on back out. Um, the other benefit here is if I'm having to work anything, reach over, um, grab somebody in the water, um, I've got, I'm lower down than I would be up on the deck. And so this lifeline is actually right here, sort of mid uh, sort of stomach area as, as opposed to my waist level and it gives it a little bit more prevention to falling overboard. So there's extra protection in this lower part of this ramp area. And uh, it just f provides a lot of flow here. Another uh, nice thing I like about this kind of design is with the twin helms, you have a lot more room in the center of the cockpit to come and go. Um, you don't have a big wheel that you have to climb around. Uh, same with kind of like the cockpit combing, trying to climb over that. You're able to walk through, and, and there's the convenience of being able to steer from either helm, but I do feel like it also provides a lot of general safety for moving in and out of the cockpit area. You can come around here, and I'm not stepping over anything. I'm uh, walking on a flat surface around and up to the ramp up to the uh, forward deck area. So that's a great consideration if you have the opportunity to look for a boat that has a design where they don't have the big wheel in the middle but has twin helms. It really improves um, safety and flow move, maneuvering around in the cockpit. Okay, that wraps up this first video in our series on boating safety. As always, we hope you enjoyed it and we encourage you to like it so others can more easily find this kind of content. Be sure to check out our playlist of other how-to videos on our Life 4.0 channel, as well as our many sailing adventure videos as we explore this amazing planet one anchorage at a time.